Hey, special educators, I'm Jennifer from Positively Learning. Welcome to the Special Educators Resource Room. If you're like me, you're always looking for ways to save time and streamline your work. That's why this podcast was created, to give you the systems and solutions you need to get your time back. Tune in for tips, tricks, and tools that will help you manage your workload and make the most of your time. Whether you're brand new or experienced, all are welcome in the Special Educators Resource Room. What? Get rid of my calming corner? Are you crazy? Hey, Special Educators, this is Jennifer from Positively Learning, and I promise I have a great solution for you. Now, I will say... I absolutely love the idea of a calm down corner. Having a safe space in our classrooms is so important for every student that walks through our door. All right, so why am I suggesting not to use one? Well, first, let's define what a calm down corner actually is. And this is my own interpretation based on my classroom experience. A calm down corner is a designated spot or area in your classroom. Most likely it's an actual corner and it's a place where a student can move themselves if they need to get away from everything and their peers and they just need to take a break, chill out, get themselves calmed down and reset so they can go back to learning. It is absolutely not a timeout zone. It's not like we're going to say, you need to go calm down, go over there, because of course that would not be very calming. But instead, we want to model how we can use our calm down strategies and how this is a safe spot to go and model how to advocate for ourselves when we need a break, because everybody needs a break sometime, right? All right, so this is sounding pretty good, having a cool down spot. As adults, we probably have our own ideas and strategies to calm down. Maybe we are sitting in the car taking some deep breaths. Maybe we're calling a trusted friend or family member. Maybe it's music. Maybe we're singing something or maybe we're just taking a quick walk. Sometimes we can't get away from a scene, so we are just kind of taking a chill in our mind. But that actually brings me to the point of this episode. When we have a designated spot, a safe spot for our students, it is a wonderful thing. You know, we're saying it's okay to feel frustrated. We all feel frustrated and you can go get yourself together because you know what? We don't have to be on all the time. It is okay. However, in my experience as a special educator, we are always looking towards the future. In special education, this is so important, but I'm sure you feel the same way as maybe a parent or a teacher working in any grade. I want to look past this school year. I want to set my students up for success when they leave my classroom. I only get them for 10 months, right? So if I've created this awesome zone in my classroom, that's great. But what happens when they leave. What happens when they walk out my door to go to enrichment or specials or recess or the lunchroom or any other place in the school? Think about your student's school day. How often are they in your sight? It might feel like all day long, but that's not really true, right? They are moving throughout the building. They're leaving and going home for the day. They have lots of different scenes and experiences. So when we create this amazing area in our classrooms and teach our students those strategies to use when they visit that area, we're sort of creating a progress trap. What's a progress trap? Well, I apologize in advance if I use this term a lot in future episodes. It was something that we always talked about at our school, and it's something I thought about quite a bit. A progress trap is, it's kind of interesting. It's when you're doing something so well that you're almost creating a ongoing situation or or problem. Here's an example. You are a outstanding special educator, I know you are, and you are working in a specific grade level. And you are going above and beyond. And I mean, it's just really connecting with your students. And your students are just thriving with you. Your students move on to the next grade. 
And whether it's specific to the new teacher that they're working with or the grade level or just the atmosphere, maybe it's a different school, and they may be getting a different level of that support and they sink right to the bottom. You know, like it's just really a hard transition for them. You, as this amazing teacher, created a progress trap. Maybe they did need some more help that they were able to get, you know, more accommodations or something. But because you were like providing all these things for them, it wasn't like very obvious. And they went to the next grade without these accommodations and kind of sunk. They needed them. So that's why, of course, we want to document everything we're doing. And we we all know this, but it's a progress trap. So let's go back to the calm down corner. The calm down corner is an outstanding strategy. It's an outstanding tool that we can provide. It can create a progress trap when our students are not with us. Maybe they know how to use that area, but they don't know how to apply that in the quote unquote real world. You can't see my hand quotes right now. So we want to think about still doing those amazing things for them and helping them self-regulate and calm down and using these strategies, but we want to make sure it's in a way that will transfer to all places that they go. So in my own teaching experience, I realized, first of all, I did set up a calming corner. And then I quickly realized that in my opinion, I was not doing a great service to my students because they were really struggling in other classrooms. And so I also knew that I had some situations in my classrooms from year to year where we either had to evacuate the classroom for some reason. Some things had changed on us and I could not keep that promise of here's a safe space for you because we couldn't like get to the space. (laughs) We couldn't get into the classroom or someone else needed it, you know, and, and everybody needed it at the same time and just lots of different circumstances you can probably think of. So what I did instead was I thought about a way that I could provide the same strategies, the same level of support, but I could make it easily used in different environments. So basically I wanted to make it very mobile. So what I did instead was I took the Calm Down Corner resources and I created a bin. I mean, look, a little box. And I put everything in there and we had the box. It was visible in the classroom. And I taught my students that when they needed to use the chill out zone, that they would go to the box and then move that box into a safe spot. And maybe they chose the same spot every day, but maybe that spot was being used for something else or another student. You could create several of these boxes. And and I say box because that's what worked for us, but you could make it more discreet. If you're working with older students, maybe this is a a file folder or bag or pencil pouch or maybe just a set of visuals. So I was working with a box. It was a small box and I kept it very visible. Um, Maybe it sat in the same spot in our classroom. And I taught my students how to use it just like you would introduce a calm down corner. We modeled it when things were going well. We took turns. I did examples and I had students do some non-examples on how to use the resources. But I had this box and then my students, when they needed to take that chill out zone, we had a silent signal. So it was very discreet. They weren't disrupting anything, but they also felt comfortable giving me the signal. It actually was the C with their fingers. (laughs) They made a C. And so I would give them the C back and like a thumbs up. Great job advocating for yourself. And they would move to that box and then they could take the box into a safe spot. And that way, If that calm down corner was being used by someone else, they could just go to another spot. So as I was creating these, you may want to think about creating multiple sets. Now they were pretty simple. So in this little box, I had a small pillow. I had a timer. I had one of those large, large, large sand timers. I don't know if you've seen them. I think they're like eight inches tall. They are pretty much indestructible. So I highly recommend those. Um, I do have a picture of this on my blog. I'll put the link in the blog post. So I had a timer. I had a soft pillow. It was a heart shape. It was really cute. I had this book and I I bought it for a penny. I bought six copies of it for a penny. And the reason it was a penny is it was a 
closeout sale. So I don't know if you're going to be able to find this, but I bet you already have a book in mind. It was a calm down book and my students absolutely loved it. So we called this the blue box and it was our cool down spot. So they had the book, the pillow, a timer, and then I kept visuals on a book ring that my students could flip through. So I think even that just that tactile flipping through the calming strategies was really effective with my students. You could also have a social story. I would not have put music or headphones or anything because that was not appropriate for my students. It would have been I just don't think I was safe um, for them or the headphones, but you can think about what would work for your students. So I invite everyone just to reevaluate the strategies that you're using. Is your Calm Down Corner an amazing resource? Absolutely. How can you ensure that that amazing resource is always available to your students? So I talked about kind of future planning. Our goal is always to fade these supports. You know, we're providing a lot of concrete support at the beginning, but we don't want our students to go to college and be like, hey, where's that spot? No, we want to teach them that that spot can be wherever they want to go, where they can use the strategies that they have learned in our classrooms. You do the same thing probably when somebody's not acting so nice to you and you can take a break, get some fresh air, go to your car, go to the restroom and just take a moment. That's what we want for our students as well. We don't want them to have to go to the specific zone and that's it. Oh, it's busy. Sorry. Wait, wait five minutes till they're ready. You don't want to create a situation like that. We don't want to do any progress traps. I am dying to hear what you think. Do you absolutely disagree? Are you unsubscribing from me now? I do understand we do love our calming down corners. They are really popular because they are awesome strategies. But please think about how we can make this really transferable to support our students wherever they are, whether they're in our classroom or out and about. So let me know what you think. Please check out the blog post. You can get a look at the blue box that I described, what it looks like. It's not very big. I highly recommend creating several of them. In fact, this would be a great tool to provide if it's in a bag or something small to your paraprofessionals so that they can grab that and help out their students that they're working with as well throughout the day. So let me know what you think and I will talk to you next time. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'm dying to ask, what'd you think? Be sure to hit the follow or subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. You can find the show notes and links for everything mentioned in this episode at PositivelyLearningBlog.com. See you next week for more special education solutions.